Um, thought there's a lot more that we need to do with this club. Um, it's a great little club, but it's actually not a club as I recognise it. Um, there is no fan engagement with the club and participation, and that's what this is all about: is actually giving the fans a voice. So um, I'm very happy today that we're actually finally getting to the point where we can actually launch this and start to do some very tangible things. And I think that's one of the key things as we go through this phase and we try to attract new members is actually deliver stuff. And that's going to be one of our key objectives. Um, we, we have the forum and obviously we have a number of side conversations between supporters and the management. But we want to formalise that approach uh, in a much more um, structured way so that we actually then engage with the club and discuss issues as a club as opposed to, in a lot of cases, it's top down. We were very much want to win. You know, we're not talking about major shareholding, but we actually just want literally some skin in the game. To, and obviously, from our point of view, we're going to have to prove our worth to the club and that we can, through bringing revenue, PR, and various other things, that we can actually have that representation within the club. Sales after it's come tonight. Um, sorry. Uh, just to basically support the trust, which means supporting the club. Um, Obviously, it's a club close to my heart. Uh, hopefully, it's going to do um, some good things for the club, um, bring some more supporters in, and really, for me personally, if it's anything that's going to help the club, I'll do whatever I can to support, and uh, hopefully the trust will ask me back, um, ask me to do whatever they need, a bit of um, stuff on the day of the games, or these meetings here. And again, for me, really, if it's anything that's going to help the club, then I'll be here, and uh, I'm certainly going to put my my dodgy knee forward and uh, do anything I can to help the club. So um, yeah, I, th I think it's a great thing the guys have been saying. Obviously, it shows there's a lot of concerns and also a lot of good ideas that are going to come from this uh, these sort of meetings and the trust. So. Um, I'll, I'll leave it there because uh, there's not much more I can say apart from hopefully it's going to go forward and uh, bring a few more supporters in and uh, I'm all for it. Riverside, which is the wall that the ground uh, sits in. But I think more importantly, I've been a Greys supporter or, or follower for well over 30 years, uh, going back to the days of the old Athenian League. And, and it was something that was said earlier about... Uh, people come and go, managers come and go, but the supporters stay the same. And I just think back to certainly the early 80s, just looking over there, I can see Jimmy Burrell, Paul Cox, uh, pe people who, you, you go back 25 years, were cutting the grass on the pitch, were serving behind the bar voluntarily, were writing for the programme and doing all those things, as, as I was But when we go back there. And I've got to say that as fond as I was of the old Athenian League and going to places like Banstead and Thatcham and, and Chertsey, and I guess at least we could say we played at Wembley every year, uh, we've come an awful long way. And it may have been a bad result yesterday, and we may be up against it, but it's a hell of a lot better looking forward to going to Luton and Oxford and Cambridge United than it is going to Thatcham and Chertsey and Banstead, I, I can promise you. And you think, thinking back to the 80s, and again, it's just this bit about how, how far we've come, when the club came within hours of, of going out of business in 1982, and at that time, it was people like Ron Billings who, who saved the club, and at the same time, Jimmy Myers came in, for those who remember Jim, and injected some money in the club, and that was the start of, of really a new phase for Grey's Athletic, which was really, I think, good times. And that culminated in 1988, with us getting through to the first round proper of the FA Cup for, for only the second time in Grey's history. For only the second time in our history. And we all went down to Bath and we got beat 2-0. I think the important bit about that for me is that we almost take it for granted nowadays that we are going to be in the first round proper of the FA Cup. But it wasn't always like that. There has been a lot of progress, but the progress does bring challenges. And I think some of those have been brought out quite clearly tonight. And, you know, one of the reasons that I choose to bring my kids here to watch Greys rather than going up to West Ham or going down to South End is that I really believe that lots and lots of big league clubs have lost all touch with the grassroots and they've lost all touch with the community. And I don't want that to happen uh, to my club here in Greys. And that's why I think that the Trust is such an important initiative. We've got to ensure that this club stays deeply rooted in the community. And, and actually, 
the club does some fairly decent stuff already for that. I mean, I was horrified at the story that, that, that you were telling. I mean, m my kids last year had the free tickets from school, their school bought, bought into it. We, no, they're, they're at primary school, it was, it was at St Thomas's, and they, they, they bought into the scheme. It's horrific that, that schools aren't doing that. And, and, getting, and getting the trust together, and getting a trust that has some influence and has some power to get them into the schools rather than the club doing it directly will be a huge step in the right direction. The other thing that the club currently does, which is really good, are, are the little passes for, for kids so that kids don't have to pay to get in at all. And, and the club should be applauded for doing things like that. But I think what we're saying is we could do more and we could go further and we have to do that. And I think for, 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 for me, and I'm, I'm not going to go on all, all night, there, there are probably three or four things that the Trust needs to do. And that is to play its part in ensuring the long-term financial health of the football club. We, we've all seen and we all know the stories. Hyde United went, went out of business last month. Uh, Chester have now got debts of over £600,000. Bromgrove Rovers are, are on the verge of extinction. And we all know of lots of other clubs. We have to play our part in making sure that that doesn't happen here. We need to be ensuring that the that supporters are influencing the direction that the club's taking. And if we have a properly orchestrated, powerful uh, and constructive trust, what we don't want the trust to be is, is like the supporters' trust that, that was operating at West Ham, where it seemed to do nothing else other than knock the directors and knock the management and try to score points. If we're constructive, I believe we can do that influencing job. And, and lastly, we need the trust to play its part in, in improving those communications uh, between the board, between the people who are running the club uh, and the supporters. So I think it's a, a really big challenge that you've set yourself, Paul, uh, and I will do everything that I can to help you succeed in it, and I wish you all the luck. Thank you.